Good afternoon, everyone. It is Tuesday, August 20th. I'm Jennifer Palumbo. She's Angie Bevan, and you are watching It's On, and it's another hot day in the oh, bluegrass. Oh, my goodness. It is. You know, we're inside, and I have pants and long sleeves on. <laughs> I feel good. You step outside, instantaneously sweat. Uh, it was upper 80s when I came into work I, this morning. I know. I mean, this it's, is just, it's that heat that just smacks you in the face, and... And you it's you, like it's August or something. And you think about the people that are out there who have to work out, mm -hmm. you know, outside oh and, gosh, you know, yeah. Yeah, I know. Be careful, too. Absolutely. You can talk about how hot it is, but then it becomes a serious issue, too. And so. your pets, too. <laughs> yeah. But in here, we've got a lot going on. On today's show, we are talking about a 10-day chamber music festival here in Lexington and how you can get an inside look at the home of American Pharaoh and Justify. This is a really cool race where you actually are going to be walking and running alongside with the horses. So right. we're going to be telling you about that coming up. I know. A lot of good stuff. Stuff. Okay, let's take a look at what's on now. Jane Taylor Ryan made a video of her cat using the app TikTok. Now it's set to the music <laughs> of Mr. Sandman by the Cordettes. Check out this video. Mr. Sandman. Awesome. I, yeah, <laughs> some people have got some time on their hands, you know? It's so perfectly choreographed, it too. Is. So I guess is, is it TikTok is. is what Vine used to be. I'm a you little are, out of touch with all of these apps. You are the wrong person. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I don't know. But I'm guessing that's what it is. I love a good, I love a good animal video. <laughs> I though. know, I know. Cats and dogs, yeah, bring them on. All right, well, here in Lexington, the Helix Garage is one of the top three winners of LookingFor.com and Architizer's coolest parking spots in the U.S. contest. The Helix Garage is downtown at 160 West Main Street. And now this is based on sustainability, historical elements, and artistic design. The Helix Garage features three layers of steel panels suspended on a vertical steel scaffold. And then at night, the steel panels illuminate the street. The two other top contestants, Detroit's Michigan Theater and Seattle's Sinking Ship. That's a big honor for a city the size of yeah. Lexington to be up against those big cities. And it's also it neat, too, how they change the colors of the lights based on what the events are downtown. Right. So they'll have different colors. They'll have pink when it's, you know, October and breast cancer exactly. awareness. They'll, I'm sure it's been blue for UK at times. Yeah. And it's pretty, you know, it's nice to look at that garage, getting out of it on yeah. that Helix. That's the one where yeah, I mean, you kind of merge with you the get, cars and you then get you're going dizzy, around in circles. And you, yeah. I feel, anytime I drive down that, <laughs> I'm afraid I, I'm feel gonna hit the side. Like, yes, I feel like I'm going to just run off the side, but I guess it's a cool design. It is a cool spot. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, we've already been talking about the hot days we've had this summer, um, but what about keeping your thermostat set? Because there's a lot of controversy is maybe not the right word, but people have different opinions on yes. if you keep it really warm, if you just keep it cool. Well, according to a new report, you should set your temps for energy efficiency to the following. 78 degrees when you're home, 85 degrees when you're at work or away, huh, and 82 degrees when you're sleeping, or if it was 82 degrees, you're probably not sleeping. Okay, so you no used way. to live in Texas. For, before we yeah. talk about how we feel about these yeah, here we were, in Lexington, we were talking what about was this it like? before. So, when you live somewhere where the summer is 95 to 100 degrees for two months straight, you get used to it being 78 degrees inside. That's typical. Because and it just can't get any cooler yeah, in the it's, house? it's all relative. And yeah. if you keep it any cooler, your air conditioning is literally just going to run nonstop. Right. So you kind of get used to it. But here, no. What do you keep it here? Honestly, inside about 74, which I think a lot of people think okay. is on the warm side. That I mean, if I set it at mm -hmm. 74, my, my husband would be yelling at me. Yeah, I mean, too hot. He, if, if he had his way, it would be 68 degrees. I keep it at 70, mm -hmm. then turn it up, you know, when I come to work. Right. But then our dog stays at home when I'm at work. Yeah, so, so you know, I don't want, her, I don't want her home her, yes. you know, with 82 degrees on I in know. the house. Oh, poor she baby can't handle that. Yes, yeah, I so, know. But, but, no, but I, it I is interesting to see what people, yeah. you know, where people come in on that. Cause, because some people do like it warmer, uh -huh. and then there are people who just, Say no way. I, I like I like it cooler too. It helps mm -hmm. me sleep. I feel like yeah, it's a little. I'd rather have to maybe put a layer on than just sit there and right be sweating. Be sweating. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Okay. Well, so brace yourself for the results about this survey. This is actually kind of nasty about how often people change their underwear. An underwear company asked 2,000 American men and women that question and found 45% don't change their underwear every day. They say 45% admitted to wearing the same pair for two days or longer. So 
45% don't, that means 55% okay. do, well, so I'm, the majority do. I'm glad but... that that's at least on the right side, yeah. that the majority, I think that's kind of weird. I mean, hey, I get skipping a shower here or there. Sure, right. Of course, but it no happens. matter what, just when you change your clothes, it's a new day, it's a new pair of underwear. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we'll just leave that one yeah. at that, okay? Yeah. All right, um, what about um, the lake? Let's talk about the lake, because we're talking about underwear. Maybe you wash your underwear in the lake. You can also <laughs> you sleep. You could camping, sure. You could also sleep on the lake. So check this out. This is really cool. This is the Shoal Tent by Smithfly. According to the website, it's the first of its kind. It's an inflatable floating raft with a tent topper that allows you to sleep out on the water. Now the website states the tent structure is totally inflatable and when it's inflated, it stands up to high winds without a problem. It also packs down into a burrito style carry and storage bag. And it costs $1,900, so, you know, close to $2,000. By the way, this is so popular that the item is currently out of stock. It will be available, we're told, in six to eight weeks, in case you're not interested. And uh, if you are interested in this, you can check out smithfly.com. That's where people are ordering them. It's cool. interesting, though, because I would be worried about, you know, you're out there and then all of a sudden a storm pops up or something. Uh -huh. I, I don't, I, but they say that it can withstand the winds, but for $2,000, I, I mean, might be cheaper mm -hmm. to rent a houseboat for a night or two. Yeah, because I would just feel a little, a little and it'd be hard stranded to sleep out the water's there. Moving I know. And <laughs> it seems like a neat idea, but yeah, it's I cool. Don't know. You know, when people talk about glamping, yes, that so I've never that done that. Have you ever done interest. it? I've never done it, but I'm like that kind of sounds like something I could handle. Yeah, that would be fun. <laughs> I think. Okay, well, check out this adorable video of a father and his baby girl that's gone viral. It shows a New York firefighter giving his nine-month-old daughter a pedicure. Jimmy Howell posted this video on Instagram showing him painting his daughter Kensley's toes and her throwing a little shade. At one point, he starts filing away at his daughter's nails and look at her, she's not having it. She's fussing a little bit, but of course he's calm and cool. He's a firefighter. He quickly put out the fire by telling her, I'm sorry if I'm rubbing too hard. But then he jokes that at least his services are free. She's precious. Hal says his daughter has always been a very happy baby. That's a brave Oh my gosh. Dad. Yeah. I mean, you know, because babies they're they're always moving around, mm -hmm. but you know, give him credit for trying. Yeah, I mean trimming a baby's fingernails oh, is so challenging. And it's you're just you're so nervous and you're sitting there and like shaking a little know, bit and yeah and they're them. and they're jerk you know they're moving and so you're trying to get them to sit still oh have man. you mastered that art mastered not quite yeah i, I can do it somewhat successfully it's you know if you just get a few if you just get a few done you're like okay you're good yeah good job <laughs> just, let's just yeah get a little <laughs> bit done but okay the battle of the chicken sandwiches is heating up on social media the Twitter feud, it started yesterday when Chick-fil-A tweeted, highlighting its sandwich as the original. It always calls it that. Right. Well, Popeyes replied by tweeting the question, y'all good? The fried chicken fast food <laughs> chain released its first chicken sandwich nationwide a week ago. That mocking tone of its tweet garnered a lot of attention. And Twitter users, of course, joined in. They shared which restaurant that they believed had the best chicken sandwich. This was the Twitter feud of yesterday, and yeah. I am all here for it because even Wendy's got involved. They tweeted, y'all out here fighting about which of these <laughs> fools has the second best chicken sandwich. And then, of course, Popeyes came back and Chick-fil-A came back. But, I mean, they all have great chicken sandwiches. They do. I know. Can, there can be more than one, and right? they're different. Yeah, yeah they're different. Yeah. So, I know. I do, I do love a chicken sandwich. But, I know, <laughs> I'm a chicken nugget fan, usually. I mean... I'm going to go the for the nuggets over the sandwiches, yeah. I think, any day. Yeah. Well, if flooded homes and downed trees aren't bad enough, now there's something else to worry about with hurricanes. It seems they can make spiders more aggressive. Researchers have found spiders that live in storm-prone areas, such as the Gulf of Mexico and the East Coast, are riding out the storms and becoming a lot more aggressive. Colonies aggressively pursue food and produce more egg cases. Then the spiderlings also have a better chance of surviving into early winter. The team gathered its information by monitoring subtropical storm Alberto and hurricanes Florence and Michael during the 2018 hurricane season. So it's a good thing we don't live in a yeah, hurricane prone area. Is, that is not good news. <laughs> More aggressive spiders is not what we need. No. Um, speaking of things that are a little scary, if the prospect of an alligator in your yard isn't scary enough, how about this? Apparently, they climb fences. A gator scaled a fence at the Naval Air Station in Jacksonville, Florida. Watch this guy. It was over the weekend. A woman was driving by and she caught the gator in action. 
it does a belly flop on the grass at one point and then goes on its way. Officials with the air station said that they don't plan on removing the alligator from the base unless it poses a danger to any residents there. That's an impressive little jump there, oh, though. There's the belly flop, yeah. <laughs> That is, yeah, you think you're fenced in in your backyard, yeah. you're safe, you know, these people live in Florida, you see all the time, you know, yeah. gators winding up in pools and stuff, and you think you're safe, nope. not so fast. Nope. Well, it's amazing what can scare athletes. Stepping into the batter's box to face 100 mile an hour pitches, well, apparently that's not the biggest thing. When a critter comes crawling, everyone panics. In the bottom of the first <laughs> inning during yesterday's White Sox Twins game, a stray squirrel caused a delay after it scurried across home plate. It eventually ended up in the Minnesota dugout underneath the protective netting, causing a stir among players who leapt from their seats. The critter then crawled across the bench and appeared to hide underneath the gap where the twins keep their bats. Seems maybe the squirrel went a little nuts after seeing some of those spare peanuts and was just going after the prize. That's, That's funny. funny. I think squirrels are cute. I don't yeah. think they're really scary. Yeah, it's not like, I mean, I think it'd be, even though mice are tiny, I think a mice would be a little more jarring because, you know, you're used to seeing squirrels run around outside. We had a few. mouse in our house and it was under the couch and my, mm -hmm. my kids figured out a way to, you know, bring it out. I was up on a good. chair freaking out. And the, you know, they're they, like, they they're real the ones, chill. Let's they're put cool. it in a shoe yeah, box and good. just take it outside and set it free. And, uh, That's Meanwhile, better. mom's up, you know, up there terrified screaming oh, in the house. <laughs> good for them. I know. Because, yeah, those little critters, they'll... We'll get in there. That's scary. All right. In, in Anaheim, California, Disneyland, they honored a free admission ticket to a Canadian woman. She won it during a visit 34 years ago. Tamia Richardson was just 14 years old when she won the ticket. It was August 27th, 1985. It was all during a giveaway celebrating the park's 30th anniversary. Well, she forgot about that pass until just now. She stumbled upon it in a box of her keepsakes. So she took her two teen daughters to Disneyland on Thursday and the park honored that pass and gave her admission to Disneyland and California Adventure Park. The ticket was worth $16.50 in 1985. Today, that cost about $199. Those good parks for, are not cheap. No, and good for Disney for honoring it. You know, they could have been like, oh, you know, it expired oh, after a course. year or something, but to let of her course. do that, what a great gift. I know, it looks like they had fun, so that's cool. <laughs> yep. Country Music's biggest night will also be Ladies' Night this year. The Country Music Association has announced Carrie Underwood will host the 53rd Annual CMA Awards. Carrie has hosted since 2008. Now, Brad Paisley is usually her partner, but this time we get legends. Reba McIntyre and Dolly Parton will join Carrie Underwood on stage. The CMA says Reba and Dolly will help celebrate the legacy of women within country music throughout the ceremony. The show will happen at Bridgestone Arena in Nashville on November 13th. I got to see Dolly Parton when she was at EKU in Richmond. Oh, wow, awesome. what a fantastic, I mean, and this was just a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. She is still going strong. She puts on a fantastic show. And I mean, she it was does. just, I just love Dolly. She's and such Reba. an entertainer. Yeah. Such an, yeah, and I like, I do you like country music in general? I do, yes. Yeah, yeah. New, some newer country music. I like the older, yeah, yeah more I'm not the classic. Too, but, I mean, but those three yeah. are, yeah, they're timeless and they're awesome. Okay, well, take a run or a walk on a private course within the farm that is home to Triple Crown champions Justify and American Pharaoh. We'll tell you about an event that also raises money for animals next on It's On.